Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Storytime with Queen of Dragons podcast. Today I will be telling you about ravens. I know a lot of our viewers love these mysterious beings just as much as we do here in our Wyvern house, but how were they seen in different ancient cultures? Let's find out. One of the first ancient cultures to especially acknowledge these beautiful birds were ancient Greeks. They associated ravens with Apollo, the god of archery, prophecy, truth, healing, and sometimes also associated with the sun. They were his messenger into mortal world. In Greek tales, originally ravens had been white, but got turned black after raven told its master Apollo about his beloved princess Coronis being unfaithful to him. He did it in anger. And even though they are they were associated with the sun god, people feared them and thought them to be a symbol of bad luck. Me and ancient Greeks are definitely not on the same page here. I personally prefer the view of ravens in ancient Norse mythology. The tales especially speak of two. The names are Hugin and Munin. They are the helping spirits of the god Odin. They sit on his shoulders and whisper all the news which they see and hear into his ear. Every morning, Odin sends his ravens out to fly around the world, and by the breakfast time, they are back with the news. This explains why Odin also used to be referred as the raven god. The name Hugin comes from the word Hugur, which means thought, and the name Munin from the word Munir, which is harder to translate but has meanings like thought, desire, and emotion. Disregarding Hugin and Munin, ravens also appear in some Norse poems. There is a 9th century poem which describes Van Valkyrie meeting a raven and discussing the life and exploits of Harald Harfagri, and also a 13th century poem which speaks of the raven of ravens of hell who tear out, tear out the eyes of those who answer back to them to mention a few. Another deity associated with ravens is an ancient Celtic goddess Morrigan. She's one of Phoenix's closest deities, so if you would like to know more about her, feel free to ask in the comments and he will make sure to reply. But well, what I'll say about her in regards to ravens is that she was said to hover over battlefields in the form of a raven or a hooded crow and choose which men are going to fall. If anyone saw a group of three ravens, it meant that Morgan is watching and may even pay the person a visit, which was not a good thing. In Celtic mythology, these birds have also been favorites of the god of artists and artisans named Lud. He had two ravens to attend to all of his needs. Native Americans had very different stories about ravens in different tribes. Some saw them as a symbol of transformation, some associated them with the gift of sunlight, and others knew them as stealers of souls. There is another interesting and not so well-known tale of a raven. It comes from Koryaks, the group of indigenous people who lived in the highly volcanic Russian peninsula of Kamchatka. In almost all of their myths, a figure named Kutch appears. He is the great raven and the creator of everything. Their land was created when a feather of his fell into the water. He created several men and only one woman. All the men fell in love with her, and when they died, they were all turned into mountains, and since during their uh, their lives they loved the one woman so deeply, their hearts were still hot, and therefore the volcanoes got created. In nowadays, there are a lot of beliefs and superstitions still left alive about these birds. Irish still have a proverb to have a raven's knowledge, which is said about someone who is believed to have psychic abilities. In Ireland and Scotland, a raven calling over a roof is believed to bring death to the occupant. If in Sweden you hear a raven calling from the left side, especially in the morning, it is a bad omen. Some people there even believe that ravens are the murder victims who have never gotten a proper funeral. Some Welsh still to this day believe that if a blind person shows kindness to a raven, it will help them regain their eyesight back. If you are considering getting a raven-shaped good luck charm, here's what it symbolizes. It stands for transformation, 
knowledge, creativity, curiosity, creation, change, prestige, healing, clarity, humor, and truth. Let one bring you all of these qualities. But for now, I'm saying goodbye to you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, because I will be doing more of these podcasts. Let the wisdom of a raven guide you today. Bye!